if, as publicity is also well part of what we do on the on the Debian website to attract our users, we have this publicity buff here in the round room at DebConf 11 today. Um, Alexander Reichle-Schmel from the publicity team will give or will lead this buff. Well, welcome for joining me here now in the round room instead of going to the multi art talk. Um, I'm sure it will be made available later as video, so you probably don't miss anything. Um, for those of you who attended my hour talk yesterday, I'm sorry, hour talk yesterday, um, I had on the last slide a list of open issues, and I think we can more or less use it as a, well, kind of Tagesordnungspunkte, Agenda, thanks. Um, agenda for today, I think we just need to clean it up a little bit. I think it doesn't make any sense to discuss the distinction between internal and external communication. Besides that we would like to have a, a small, well, text on planet Debian. So um, that was a point brought up yesterday that because many people look at Planet Debian and take it as something official from Debian, we would like to have them add a small statement um, on, the, on, the, on the bottom of Planet Debian um, that it is just some opinions and nothing official by Debian. Do we agree on that or would we like to discuss that? <laughs> Okay, one thumbs up, no thumbs down. Okay, so I just noted down as something we agree on, or someone else. So, as a topic, Press team can trigger partial rebuilds. I think that's in the domain of the web team to fix it. Actually, <laughs> the web team consists of translators who would like to see their translators published. So sooner or later it will be fixed. Um, well, what else? I see this. Um, well, maybe I start with that topic because some, you might have noticed already it's something I, uh, I really like to talk about because I think it's quite important to us. It's blockdb.org. Um, just right, come in. Um, uh, yesterday in the talk wasn't really the time to give any details about that. But a small status update on that is um, our Debian system administrator team sitting there. Um, I'm not the only one from... Well, <laughs> our, our Debian system administrators are currently testing the software we might use for that. Um, maybe you just can say well, a few words about that. Well, the idea is to use... Um, is yeah. The idea is to use software called Open Melody, um, which can generate static HTML content, um, which we then can, with a, some sort of post commit hook, after um, committing the, after publishing the content, rsync to every. Uh, website mirror, so we have actually, uh, so we end up with block and arc uh, also being in GeoDNS, uh, so every um, user faced um, uh, website is uh, not only on a single machine but published on several machines from the Debian project. Well, that's, that's the current idea. And we are looking into that software if it's suitable for, for that, what the press team wants. 
Yeah, that sounds really good. Um, if, if I understand it correctly, the idea was to have every Debian developer be able to write an article, but with um, group. I think that will happen in a in a later as a that will happen in a later state. In a later state. Okay. The the po we in the in the buff we had this morning um, we said we want to to have some single sign-on authentication for um, web applications. The idea for that is um, so that uh, every Debian developer who has a login to db-debian.org is able to write stuff or to, to use web applications with one password. If, if in the end uh, this works out with uh, Open Melody as well, I think the publicity team is very, will be very happy about that. I'm not sure how fast that will happen, as we are still, um, as we are, as we haven't set any single sign-on or whatever up at the moment. Okay. Um. Hi. Um. Maybe you had. Uh, you showed how the publicity team, team currently works, so how you gather information and um, uh, how <laughs> this information is being published that might help others yeah. within this room to find out how you are working and maybe getting the team a bit bigger. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't have really time to... <laughs> I didn't have really time to prepare that this both properly. You might have noticed we were kind of busy the last days. Well, um, the publicity team and therefore also the press team has currently a mailing list and an IRC channel. This is our IRC channel. No, ah, no it's not. It's a That's our IRC channel. Um, and our, well, if you can't read it, it's just an ISC channel with people joining in and dropping out occasionally. Um, so nothing really important to see. Um. <laughs> okay. Um, our workflow, as I tried to say, um, to explain yesterday, is more or less that we are kind of a mouth group. There's not really a borderline who's a member of the publicity team or not. So basically everyone can jump in and propose ideas. And if they are good, it will be done. Usually we hope that if you join and have an idea, you also, um, well, <laughs> if you join and have an idea, you, we, we usually expect you to also have some the, the will to invest some time into making your idea come true. Um, the actual work, well, obviously IRC and the mailing list are just used for communication. The actual work is mostly done via our subversion repository. Um, it's very easy. Usually we use the subversion announcement to draft announcement and the project news. Hi. Before um, moving the documents into the website, <laughs> um, well, we have some explanations how the version works on the wiki pages. If there's something missing, just tell me, and we can expand the documentation. Um, one point we might try to discuss is how to get the Debian project news. Um, workflow changed, improved, whatever, to have them actually on a regular interval. As you might have noticed, we try to send them out bi-weekly. So um, we... Um, that's kind of distracting. I'm going back to the <laughs> Titan pad. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, we try to send them out bi-weekly. Um, so that actually means we take 10 days for editing them where everyone can, 
write articles or usually we have a small to-do list on the top of the current draft. Everyone can edit it. On the, f on the second Friday, we usually freeze it to give um, people time to review our English and also for translators to well do the translations. And over the weekend, that's done, and we try to release the Debian project news then on the next Monday. If you look at our web page, you will see that it's not strictly every two weeks. So, how do we change that? I mean, the Debian project news were once the Debian weekly news. And I'm, I really love that back then I changed the name to project news. <laughs> so, any ideas? How do we get more people involved in adding the Debian project news and, well, at least proposing topics? Well, if I haven't mentioned it often enough, every Debian developer has right access to our subversion repository. Uh, well, has again right access to our subversion repository. There was a small bug with the Elliot moves, uh, with the Elliot migration, but now again, every developer can just write stuff into it. So, um, but. Is wanting to say something. No. Probably, maybe we want something smaller, because actually, as far as I see, it is really big. So we want to put more information in it, and this probably gives you a more, uh, um, I think a bigger time frame between the two. So probably we want something smaller, and at the same time, as soon as we get the news, we get the news uh, out in uh, one week, instead of waiting. This could be a, an idea. But then, you, if you have blog.debian.org, probably is useless, because on the blog is instantaneous. Yeah. So I don't. I, so I'm sorry for being late. Actually, I don't know no if we really uh, want to separate what it goes to the blog and what goes to the Debian project news. So if the blog wants to be just one single shot as the news comes to the Debian publicity mailing list, or if the blog wants to be the Debian project news put it on the blog. So each time you have a news, you put that on the block as well, as it is now sort of sort of. Um, you were asking for random input. Any idea? Any idea? <laughs> okay, uh, steal ideas from other people, <laughs> and an idea to steal would be to use uh, the Twitter style. Uh, users, you know, crowdsource your news. So basically, uh, if, you, if, you, uh, t uh, if you can t uh, make the users who just rarely watch the lists, you know, uh, who don't really invest time to become SVN committers and, you know, like that, if you get them to uh, 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 if, if you get them to, if you, you just said you have a basic problem. You don't even have the list of topics to cover. You know, you're saying well, you even you want any kind of contribution at all. So you gotta start small. You gotta start uh, getting people to give you the basics of the basics. And there was an old old idea thread uh, from I think it was Russell Coker who first submitted it to Debian Private many years ago. Uh, we should summarize th threads on uh, the mailing lists. But uh, that sounds very ambitious. Uh, but if implemented in an interface combined with uh, the list Debian.org archive, then you could have the readers, you could uh, poke the readers and say, OK, we noticed you, hit, uh, you read three messages from this thread through our list archive interface. What was this about? You know, one word is just enough, you know, tag it. And then, that way, y you could build a, a, a metadata database. <laughs> you know, uh, all, uh, you could gather metadata about all this unparsable data that requires all the all this man hours to process and to uh, digest and to put it into Debian project news. Mm. You know, start small. That that would be my main idea. Okay. I uh, well, I agree with Russell on there. If there's a 
kind of major thread on a mailing list, some kind of discussion going on. It should be mentioned in the Debian project news. And I agree with you, if we, if we send out, there's some discussion going on two weeks later, it might be even contraproductive. Uh, contra um, yeah, because, uh, well, imagine some smallish flame war, which is just ceased, then being mentioned in the Debian project news, it rising up again. <laughs> That's something we obviously don't want to do. I'm not really sure if taking um, some mailing lists will gain us much. Uh, as, again, we, we get to the topic of tracking website users, but I'm, I don't think that many people read our mailing lists via the list archive. I guess it's mostly pointers from various news sites or users or <laughs> yeah, it's a, just my personal feeling that I don't think it will gain us much. But, uh, but again, I, I'm not against doing it. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going off the reality of, uh, there's, there's a site called nebel.com uh, that uh, pops up in uh, Google search results all the time for me. So uh, I, I'm guessing that uh, Google leads, uh, you know, Synergy engines lead on a, a lot of users onto our mailing list through the uh, mailing lists uh, through archives, and then they figure out, oh, something's going on here. People are discussing something that's useful to me or interesting or something. So I'm guessing if we would, uh, if we exploit this uh, vector of uh, people coming in, we might gain something. Obviously, there's a lot of technical effort involved in getting this to work. Mm -hmm. Just a small addendum. <laughs> you, you notice the publicity group is very small, and the more technical section over there is probably crowded. So if you, could, if you have an organizational issue that you, you may help fix <laughs> with a technical issue, throw it to the lines over there, and then maybe something will happen. Use the resource that we do have over there. <laughs> so, by the way, it was not a, criti a criticism against the Debian project news, the fact that it was long. It was very well done, but it's still, it's very big. Uh, I think that was we... was a four-week issue. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think that we have a parallel problem. I mean, I'm, being, I'm speaking now as a Debian events uh, team. We have a problem that people usually don't publicize their stuff to the correct mailing list. So we don't get the information as when we want the information. We get the information because we dig into the mailing list, blogs, uh, personal uh, stuff, whatever. So we arrive late, and actually it is a good idea, Joseph has, or actually our users tell us something. So if we get the news about uh, an event or a new release or something that is important when it is important, we probably have more news. We need to, we need sort of uh, filtering, that's clear. But we probably have more material, and in that case we have, we can have Debian uh, weekly news, or we can have a two week news, or we can have three week, we can have even, uh, have even have two in one week if there's something which is really important. And this is something that I will, I will, would like to discuss with the event box as well, event team as well, because mm -hmm. it's the same stuff with the events. So we, we publish events, before big events there's no problem. For small events, there's a real problem. There are some events that were not announced properly, and I discovered that on blog posts, and then you tell the people, oh, look, you should have sent an email, and they don't reply even to the, your, your request, so... I know the story. Yeah, I know I the story. I once was a member of the I events team, too. <laughs> I know that you actually you left the burden on me, and Francesca, and uh, Martin, but <laughs> that was a good choice. <laughs> and um, so I think that it's just a question of education of our user. As soon as there's something, it's clear that we cannot do, uh, I mean, it's clear that we don't live in an ideal world, so this will never happen for mm. everything, but still, probably we need to tell more information to people about what we want to publicize, what we want to know, and then they will just probably help us in a better way. Mm. Um, let, me, let me take one step back here. Um, what is Debian Project News um, supposed to achieve? 
the Debian project news are supposed to inform the Debian community, whatever, whoever that might be, about things happening in the Debian, well, universe. Um, that's, I'm getting more detailed. Um, the Debian community and everything that's happening there is quite big. It's ranging from, well, people porting Debian to the herd kernel up to um, people creating nice tu video tutorials or something like that. So it's a very wide universe and no one actually can know everything. But there's a lot happening on the other side of the universe, so to speak, which might be interesting or at so, least nice to know. So, so it's basically trying to be a summary of events taking place. So let me come to my point. Um, I think our um, or your our our um, point is not being very quick here. We do not um, really need to be um, current on a um, daily or weekly level. Um, if we um, get out news two weeks too late, it is not bad because people who have not read the relevant mailing lists usually want to be informed what's happening. Maybe they will, in some special cases, um, take, um, retake some, some discussions um, after the event. But I think this is not the typical case. It I think the typical case is people want to be informed in a larger um, 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 time perspective. Um, well, I think our events team will hardly disagree that it's okay to inform two weeks later about an event <laughs> taking place. Um, I, I also think there are some, well, mailing list threads where it's okay to post a summary two weeks later. But I think there are a lot of threads where some more input of our actual users might be useful. For example, um, several threads on the Debian desktop mailing list come to my mind. Where, well, Debian desktop is obviously targeting users. So involving the users can't be that wrong, or can it? Um. On the other hand, um, people who do not read Debian Desktop are not interested uh, in the daily discussions on, on, on that topic. Well, Why do they not read it then? Well, I, I, give you, I can give you one example. Um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> to, to give you one example, um, <laughs> we, you might. <laughs> um, well, um, you might remember that we have a squeeze release recently, and before the release on the desktop mailing list was discussed the, the default theme which should come with squeeze. Um, there were some proposals and then the space fund theme, which I think I can't show you, uh, it's, <laughs> well, the rocket theme won. Um, it was a discussion, I think, over one weekend and some people loved the, well, the result of the discussions and some people just hate us for the theme. I'm not entirely sure if it would have been well, more useful to have more people involved in that discussion. But I think it would have been a good idea to have the possibility to mention that discussion. I, th um, I, I think... Um, and now for something completely different. One of the most major points of the Debian project news when I started um, again was to show the people that the Debian project is still alive. Because back then we had no newsletter, we had 
occasionally an announcement. Some of the, uh, the announcements were, were just usual stuff like, well, point release, some security bugs fixed, nothing really happening. Um, well, uh, not to say anything about stable releases, but that's how other people might see it. And so the Debian project news is our, well, is the community's voice to the world. It should tell the other people that we are alive, we are doing things. And inform the users as a side effect, kind of. Well, what I would like to bring up again, what Gizmo already started, was the fact when we will have, or when we have blocked Debian Org, what will happen to the Debian project news? Um, because um, if we are doing regular content, pub, uh, publi publishing regular content, is the Debian project news still a thing that should be sent out, or should we just have the users reading the blog Debian.org thing? <laughs> so, um, to slightly, this might sound like I'm derailing that question, but it's with a relevant comment, I hope. Um, the Free Software Foundation recently, about a year and a half ago, started publishing a monthly newsletter, and they found that having a consistent publication frequency really helped them maintain the readership of that newsletter. Uh, at the same time, the Debian Weekly Product News appears to be published just about exactly once a month now. So uh, it seems to me that if we admit that the Debian Product News is monthly, then this leaves a lot of space for the blog and also a lot of space for the micro-updates of microblogging services. Um, I also think that having a blog is not going to make uh, the project news unnecessary because in my perception, uh, what people like most about the project news is that they aggregate things. It's a lot uh, like a digest. You, you get them every two weeks or maybe a, a bit less often. Um, and it's, it's not much work to keep up with the going, going on in, in the community. You just read through the mail and you basically have a, r a rough idea what's going on. Um, and I think the people who like this aggregation service that we do for them are exactly those who would not like to keep up with a steady stream of blog posts or micro blog posts or whatever. So um, maybe this is crazy, but I guess at some point uh, the, pro the, the project news would probably also have to summarize what's been in the project blog or something. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a lot of work, all this aggregation, because it's manual work and um, there's few people who like this type of stuff, but I think they're really, really useful. And we should not abandon that, even if you have a blog and other things. Well. So going back to what Arne said before, I really think that we need to decide what goes to the Debian pro uh, project news. Because I, I'm a such kind of a person that don't like microblogging, that don't like Identica, Twitter, whatever. I want to get emails. I get the emails now, I can read whenever I want. I don't want mm -hmm. to be online to read something. And so Definitely. this means that, in my opinion, whatever goes to the blog, whatever goes to the Identica account, whatever goes to Twitter, whatever you want, must have an email. Being it in on Debian uh, events, oh, Debian events, sorry. <laughs> the Debian publicity announced, Debian announced, whatever, just create two mailing lists, one that gets microblogging posts and one that they get, they get uh, the summarize or digest stuff. But I, I think that we really need to publish as much as possible as we can. Because, uh, we, I mean, we have the DPL in Taiwan and there were no uh, mention of that on the Debian events news. And this is just because it was a single talk. It was a, deci a decision by the events team, probably by me and not by the other two, because I got the email and I replied. It was not worth to put on the major events in Debian because we only put major events when we have a real presence. I mean, a big presence. Not that I'm not saying that the DPL is not a big presence, but the talk by the DPL without any background, why it was invited there, whatever, and announced two days before the, con the talk, I don't think it's worth it. As she uh, said about the Free Software Foundation uh, newsletter, I still get it. I mean, I, I mean, I read it. I don't read it, uh, read it so much because I'm in Europe, and unfortunately, whatever happens there is mostly in Boston and US. But I get the Free Software Foundation Europe newsletter 
and they have the same problem. Sometimes you get an information which is too old, and you say to yourself, what's the prob what's the what's the wor what's worth it with that? Still, they send the information. So probably you want to know what happens, no matter what, no matter if it's uh, actual or not. And at the same time, you need to advise people what's going on. So it's a double problem, I mean, in my opinion. And there's no right solution. I'm sorry. Just quickly, I think, uh, obviously, all of the Debian publicity outlets should include email mechanisms to receive them. Uh, so obviously, the blog should have an email subscribe. And obviously, there should be a way to subscribe to the identic feed by email. and then. If that's what you, how you want to read them, then you can be part of listening to those outlets still. Well, actually, when the project news was still called weekly news, I translated them to German for a pretty long time, and at some point, I wasn't able to get the translation done in time or timely manner. And I wondered myself if I should send it out three days, four days later. Uh, and actually, I just did. And I added a short paragraph on top where I explained the situation that it's delayed and I'm sorry for that. And actually, several people responded and said, yes, thanks for sending it out, nevertheless. So even if it's might be old news and a bit outdated. People still like to have the constant stream. It's exactly like that. If you want to give an idea of the Debian presence, we must send out even if it's outdated. Because it's the only way that people know we are there, we are alive. If you want to reach user to participate in something, we must send it out only before, because otherwise the user don't go because it's too late. Mm -hmm. But I still don't think that th this is the objective of Debian Project News. This is the um, objective of mailing lists. For example, De De uh, Debian Events EU. EU. Well, also, do we have a sense of how many people are subscribed to receive Debian product e news versus the Identica feed versus Debian Events EU? Because that'll give us a sense of which of those is succeeding at convincing people we exist. Statistic? Stats? Uh, I increase the font size a bit. Is that readable? Um, what are we looking at? We News is read by 22,000 people. I think I once checked. Um, somehow you can. Ah, it's a check. Um, that's, that's, it's dropping. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> but I think at about. Well. I think somewhere you can see the, the point where we st restarted the Debian project news again. Um, and the announce mailing list, it's read by security announce, 31,000 people. Announce, 29,000 people. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. It's wrong. It's wrong. So, um. <laughs> We're just checking all the website numbers right now uh, on the mailing list numbers. Um. Actually, where are we going with this? <laughs> um, I can't check the publicity list because the publicity list is on alias. Isn't it? <laughs> but it, I can't find it. <laughs> uh, any case. I don't think this is 
super usable by now. I mean, it's great. We have big numbers. Uh, it's 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 fun to see. It's motivating, and it should make us go on. Well, and it obviously <laughs> points out that the mailing lists and the newsletters are far from being dead. Yeah, that I agree. Um, I just wanted to give one other thing into the discussion. Mm, in my perception, when doing uh, the, the weekly news and after that the project news, the, um, the problem often wasn't uh, how fast do, uh, do we get our pieces written up and is it too late and should we wait another week or not. Um, really, most often, the problem that we had was getting them full or at least... Uh, over a certain threshold that we felt was necessary in order to have this sent out and be a proper uh, project news. And really, the problem, I think, that, that um, makes us slower is not so much writing the pieces up, it's collecting topics. Um, because, yeah, Definitely everybody still in here is reading lots and lots of mailing lists and trying to keep up with everything, but then there's all this stuff going on in uh, mailing lists with uh, local in, lang in local languages and there's other stuff we miss and stuff that went down in some IRC channel and whatever. So maybe something that would help the project news to, to be faster or to be bigger or whatever you wanted them to be would be to somehow find a way to make it easier for people to point us towards pot potential topics. Like, I don't know, the most stupid thing that comes to mind is I a website with a text field where you basically just drop a URL, send, uh, hit, hit a send button and walk away, or I don't know, the ident some kind of cool website URL sending account, and there's all this kind of stuff already existing anyway. Well, what we can easily do is, well, going in the direction of crowdsourcing is to have, um, say, on Thursday or even one day before that, uh, uh, an dent on the Debian, on Identica de, uh, slash Debian, calling for content for the Debian project news before it's getting uh, before it's frozen. That's something we can obviously do. <coughs> I've never tried that before. Well, it's just an idea, <laughs> and as we as a publicity team decide what is published on Identica, I think it's no problem in getting the axe for that. <laughs> okay. Well, about um, getting um, news items um, in, in your view, um, uh, um, mailing them to Debian News um, um, should do it too, isn't it? Mailing to where? Um. Please? Um. In, um, mailing it to the mailing list. Yeah, but it's okay, um, but it rarely um, happens. So, um, it rarely happens. Every issue has on the bottom of it, and if you want to continue reading it, please send an email to that list, something like that. I don't think... Well, some, some Debian developers sometimes send in something, but I never see... I think I never got something from... An, ordinary user, so to speak. I'm wondering if actually anyone read, is reading it. So, but, but surely, sending it to our list is, does work. If anyone on the live stream is hearing it and would like to add some content to the Debian Project News, please mail it to debianpublicity at lists.debian.org. So, uh, but I think Gizmo had another you wanted to add something? And I'm fearing we are running out of time. Yeah. No, it's just a general comment. I would like to stress the fact that things evolved quite in a well way. I mean, we, I really subscribed to the, to the Debian publicity mailing list after last year events buff, and at least I see people involved there. I see at least two or three different requests for um, translating or checking the English announcement of something. And this is something that I think I would like to, to stress out. Because uh, it's, it's a big thank you to the team. It's working quite well. And really, we are now trying to improve things. But uh, seeing what happens before and what, where we are now, we should see this stuff in a positive way. So thank you very much.
Am I getting wet? Um, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I think we, we improved over the last four years, I think, constantly. But that doesn't mean we can't get better. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> right. I have plenty of new items for the event stuff, which is actually is part of the publicity stuff. So we decided last, uh, just to remark, we decided last year, or at the beginning of this year, mostly that there is an events team that reply to the events at Debian.org address, but everything is discussed on publicity mailing, publicity mailing list. So actually we are just a sub-team sub of the uh, publicity team. So similar as press at Debian Org and the publicity team. Yeah. Yeah. So any other ideas? Any other topics? I think we have still three minutes left. Looking at my old to-do list from yesterday. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I think I said this last year, but uh, the publicity is one side of it. There's also the other side, gauging public opinion about Debian. Um, this is something we haven't looked at yet, but I hope we start to at some point. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, Ubuntu Locos. We don't really have any such thing in Debian. In Ubuntu, they're mostly used for marketing, I would guess. That's what you would say. Um, so it might be interesting to explore this within the publicity team, at least think about it. Well doing marketing in the meaning of gathering... Are we speaking of, of website logos or of, are we speaking of... Um, <laughs> uh, of I think we have one very strong local team, which is the Swiss one. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, I should explain more about the... Um, thing. So it's an abbreviation for local community um, and they call it loco oh. and yeah. So they organize events locally and hack fests and whatever. But I think it's mostly used for marketing stuff. Yes and to some degree we are in a completely different situation here because there is Canonical backing up uh, the local teams, sending them material stuff for presenting at events and things like that. And we don't really have the resources to send stuff around. So again, I don't want to publicize my buff, my buff, sorry, the events buff later, <laughs> but we are going to discuss that. Are we aware of how many community Debian has in the world? I mean, in the sense, how many communities are really community driven by Debian developers or Debian people which are involved with the Debian publicity, with anything else? Because otherwise it's very difficult. I mean, uh, Rhonda said about, uh, told about the Debian CH community, but actually we are trying to, be, to do stuff in Switzerland and we don't do anything because there are no big events. Still we are present because we, we produce merchandise. So that's the main reason people know the Debian CH community. <laughs> Otherwise, we don't have any big events in Debian in Switzerland. But so do we have any other communities in the world? We, I know we have Debian France, we have Debian in, uh, in Italy, in Germany, UK. So I think that we need a census, of, uh, a census, is it an English word? I mean, we need to know how many real communities there are. And then we can go on. We can start from there. But we should not start from uh, zero. Just, just to add, we, are, we just mentioned European Debian communities, but there are quite a lot of in, in South America as well, in North America. There are many worldwide, but we are not really collecting information about them in one central place. 
we just learn from them from time to time when we see mostly merchandising. Okay. That's really a good way to get known. Okay. How could one do such a Debian community? Uh, we are running out. <laughs> just a final question. Yeah. How would one do that, such a thing like a Debian community census? We had the census for the derivative. So just yeah. make an announcement and see how many people reply. Well, I, I really hope that the Debian community is larger than the number of deri der <laughs> derivatives. Um, so I think I'm there's also a few things that we can look at. Like, I remember when we did the last release, we had this thing going on asking people who, who had local release parties to just uh, check by, uh, send a picture or say hi or something. And um, we got messages basically from all over the world telling us that they're having a release party in somewhere. And so obviously, if there's a party, there's a community. Um, so yeah, maybe we should like rather lo look for evidence of communities <laughs> and, and see what we can find instead of asking them to, I don't know, register or show up or something. Well. As a matter of fact, Debian's birthday is coming up. It's the uh, 18th birthday. So one would, one would expect... <laughs> <laughs> so one would expect to have a lot of parties worldwide. But I think on the wiki page, there are currently four Debian birthday celebrations registered. <laughs> okay, yeah, time's up. Um, well, you know where, where to find us. You know our mailing list, our ISC channel. We hopefully get some minutes written out of that. And, well, see you next year. <laughs> and in our... <laughs>